Nice here. Um, we thought um, they were joking when they first walked in, but this is no, in fact not the case. I've been talking about this being my birthday week, and this is why I guess there's this cosmic bond between myself and you guys, right? Sure. <laughs> April 5th, 1991 is the 11th anniversary of, of REM being a, a our, band, first, our first uh, show. Our first show. Yeah. Which happened where, by the way? At a church in Athens, Georgia. Yeah. Congratulations, 11 years. Congratulations. 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 Happy birthday, by the way. There we are. You don't get a handshake. That's no, I'm not allowed to get a handshake. <laughs> I, better, I better impress you with my questions okay, first. Okay, right. <laughs> okay, so what's your favorite color? No, I'm only joking. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm only joking. 11 years, um, it's a long time. I've I'm, never you guys done must anything have been for 11 years. Pardon? I've never done anything for 11 years. Yeah. Breathe, that's about it. There, there must have been something that you guys have been doing right that so many people have done wrong to be together for 11 years. We're a great band. Yeah. You know, it's, it's undeniable at this point. <laughs> it's just brilliant. that simple? Yep. That's it. Brilliant? Everybody knows it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Thanks. No, what is it? I understand um, what I what I read was that, that you paid particular attention to other bands breaking up uh, during. Well, it's we never followed anyone else's rules. Uh, I think most people that, that with bands break up, they tend to have goals that they set. You know, I have to sell this many records or make this much money, or mm -hmm. and we never had any goals at all except to stay alive. Do you have any rules? Do though? good work. Do you have any rules? Uh, never eat anything bigger than your head. That's Bill's rule. Okay. He passed away. The cool band and that, that's away. one of the things, the reasons we've done so well. We never get anything bigger than our head. Okay. Anything else? Nothing written down? No. You just have to, to be to be honest about it. You have to respect the people you work with and like them and enjoy working. I was going to say, do you guys like each other? Yeah. It's, it's, it's the only way we could have stuck together this long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't mean I don't want to kill them all at one time or another, but you know, we all love that, it. There's that, too. Well, actually, you know, one of the things you have to do when you're in a band is learn how to argue and argue creatively rather than just be bitchy about things. And, and we're, we're really good friends. We can, we can argue on any problem and then, you know, an hour later just work it out. And so many bands don't do that. Uh, you guys just finished doing, you told me, uh, did all of Europe. It's quite amazing. All of Europe. Should we go Should we? Okay. Okay. Wait. Wait. I'm sitting. Okay, Ready? Here we go. Yeah. Zurich, Munich. Munich. Hamburg, Copenhagen, Amsterdam, Amsterdam London, Paris, Madrid, Barcelona, Milan, Rome, Zurich. Right. And now LA, you're, Toronto, New York. Oh, you guys know what city you're in. Okay. <laughs> you have to write it on Not your always. shoe. Good evening, Toronto. Well, Thank you Cleveland. so much. That's right. <laughs> Good night. So it's almost over then. This, this no, we've got another two Mike weeks. I have another two or three weeks. Three weeks, actually. Yeah. We're going to play on National Public Radio at the end of the month in the U.S. Right. A thing called Mountain Stage, which is great. Uh -huh. What else? Uh, We're going to be on Saturday Night Live, Saturday Night Live in, in next Saturday. Uh, with another, with a fellow Toronto, a fellow Toronto. Uh, for, I think um, Catherine O'Hara. Catherine, Catherine O'Hara. Yeah. yeah, she's really great. Mary Margaret's sister. It was going to be. Um, Catherine's going to be performing. No, she's going to be hosting. She's going to be singing with us. Uh, Catherine O'Hara. <laughs> no, <Mary No>, no. <laughs> She's the host. It was going to be oh, the little guy from uh, Home Alone, but he, he yeah. had a contract dispute. If you can imagine that, 10 years old and he had a contract dispute. And he didn't want you guys on the show. Yeah, yeah. That so, it? great. We bumped him. We Actually, him. he wanted we more money, I think. Off. I don't know what the story was. So it, I'm really glad because I really like Catherine Harris' work a lot. And yeah. also, someone that I have someone to talk about. I, I, can't, I don't have anything to say to a 10 year old. Really? Yeah. Um, so it's, it was two, album, two, two years ago since, at least two years ago since yeah. Green, right? And then, and then you go and you do this album, and all of a sudden you have to go and talk about yourselves again. You have to have to get ready to say, what are we going to say about ourselves? I mean, I went into this little tour thing once for like three weeks, and by the time I got to my fifth interview, I was getting tired of hearing the same questions. I mean, how do you guys put up with this? Like you said, there have been 15, 16 cities in Europe, and, and now you're here. Well, well, basically, we throttled the interview. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to get that a public admittance say. of that. Yeah. So when you swing at me, that's done. We get really, 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 really mean yeah. <laughs> towards the end. And Toronto's near the end of this. But road. no, you know, the, the worst part of doing this is that you have you have to sit down, you have to analyze yourself, you have to talk about what you do. It's a lot easier just to play the music right, and though. sing it and enjoy it and let other people enjoy it and not overinterpret it or write about it, but just enjoy it. Right. Here, here. Uh, when do you finally get out, okay, you're doing the Saturday Night Live thing and uh, public radio uh, performance, when do you finally go out as a band and tour? Probably after the next record. Probably after, not going out on this one? No. no. When did you guys decide that? Just About now. That's how we got home just, from the last this is, tour. Just the very second. 
Uh, we're going to play this video, Losing My Religion. We'll talk about that and about the new album more in just a couple seconds. Great. Great. Uh, R.E.M., Losing My Religion. How much? Tank, what, what sandwiches do you guys want? You guys have been busy, been talking to other folks. It doesn't matter. It's okay, we get plenty of time. If the bread is good, I want a cheese sandwich. No mayo, please. Okay, this isn't for you guys at home. This is for somebody off camera, okay? Yeah. Thanks for coming down. <laughs> yeah, no cheese sandwiches. Would they have our mayo, orders? Please. He's got one. Yeah, we got one. Blue okay, ice we're just these touring guys eating everywhere we go. Eating where we go. That's right. Uh, about losing my religion, about the video. Uh, maybe you guys can elaborate about it because it's a really beautiful video. Well, the the term losing my religion is is not about religion, of course. It's a it's a slang term in the South and Georgia particularly that means fed up. So it's a classic obsession song. It's unrequited love. Uh, the video was done by a director named Tarsem, who's Indian and lives in Los Angeles. He hasn't done very many videos and. He, being a fan of, of R.E.M., expected that we would not be in the video, much less lip-syncing. Mm -hmm. So he made up this whole idea, created this whole idea with all different types of scenes. And, and then when I finally got together and talked to him about it, I wanted to do a straight performance video with myself lip-syncing with the band in the video. And we just took the two ideas and kind of grafted them yeah, together. Because the lighting is just absolutely awesome. The lighting is beautiful, yeah. 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 Very. Um, before talking more about, about uh, at a time, uh, solo stuff you guys have done, independent stuff, because you guys have done a lot. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming it, that's helped you guys stay together as a band is that you had all these other albums. Is that safe to assume? Yeah, you know, it's really funny because we've worked, all of us worked with different people at different times, and, and no matter how good the experiences have been, you realize how, how much harder it is to work with other people. I mean, funny management problems or musicians who don't want to work or work in situations where it's just like pulling teeth. I mean, we work in a real natural, organic way. And even though we, we've enjoyed working with all the other people, it's nice to come back. It's like coming home again. Mm -hmm. You know, bringing a few ideas, a little bit of knowledge back. It's all, I mean, I think, I think it's overstating the obvious to say that within one band, no matter who the band is and how great they are, you can't contain every musical idea that you have. And so I think it's good for all of us to be able to step outside of REM, be able to work on these other projects with people who do have different interests, have different things in mind, work differently than we do, and maybe have some of the problems that we don't have, uh, to be able to step outside of that and then, of course, always come back, come back to the three people that I respect the most and admire the most and like wor working with the most, and that's these guys. And on our 11th anniversary, I feel like a good man saying, Yes. Excuse me, this is a matter of applause, 11 years together. I want to be working here 11 years from now myself. <laughs> but for those of you out there who've never heard of R.E.M. before, uh, why don't we go through the things you guys have done outside of the band just recently? Outside saying, the band? Yeah, outside the band. <laughs> um, I did a movie. I did the music for a half-hour movie called Men Will Be Boys mm -hmm. that you'll never see. So Why? Uh, because half-hour movies don't get shown anywhere. Send me a copy we'll get it. On cable TV. Send me a copy. I've done a lot of production stuff. I've got a film company that we do public service announcements. We do documentaries. Um, I've done I've done production with bands, smaller bands from the south and you know, from other places. And I'm on the new PETA album with the Indigo Girls, which is a, a great song. I don't know what the rest of the record sounds like, but that, that's a, probably worth listening to, checking out. Let me see. Bill and I and Mike work with Warren Zevon doing the Hindu Love Gods thing, which is about four years old, and it has a very funny-looking video, which we may we or may not be. In. No, um, it, that was an afternoon's kind of rehearsal. That you know, it's the kind of thing for a musician you do every day. Usually, they don't tape it, and put it out. So. <laughs> Somebody hit a button accidentally and recorded. No, it? no, we did it on purpose. It was just for fun, just to hear it. And then four years later, they were like, "Well, gee, we'd love to put this out because Warren doesn't have a record right now." You know, I felt kind of, in a way, weird because it's, you know, us approaching blues and we're certainly not blues scholars or anything. But then again, it's kind of white boy blues, real kind of up-tempo and trashy. So it's all right. It's a good record. Have you guys lived in Athens all your life? No. No? I've been there for 11, well, 12 years. We all came to school in that, in that way. Yeah. I've seen the film, I forget what it's called now, on, on Athens, Georgia. And, and oh, how the Inside Out film. Inside Out film. I still just don't get it. I mean, the tr just the, the vibe, because there's so much coming out of Athens. It seems like a real kind of uh, fluke in geography or the universe or something like that. I don't know. You guys live there. You know what the vibe is. I've never tried. I've never been there. I just want to know. I don't think there's anything. Uh, there Athens is, a, is, a, is peculiar to Georgia because most of Georgia is rural, of course, and Athens is a college town. It's a little bit of an oasis in that way because there are people coming and going from all over the place. But um, there's nothing really that unusual about Athens to any other place in the country or in the world as far as that goes that I can think of. There's maybe more people that are, that are uh, receptive to new bands or, or whatever, whatever creative force someone might be working in. Uh, and that, that's created a little bit of a scene that, that has sustained the last decade. But, but 
it's really no different from you know a lot of other towns. It, it gets a lot more media attention, Obviously. probably unfairly. Yeah. What's, what's the population of Athens? 70,000? 80, 80, 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. Popular. It's no longer alternative now. It's popular. So I don't quite understand. It's, I think, a marketing term. Um, See, it's another pigeonhole for for writers and music industry people to describe a band. You know, they can't say, well, they sound like this or, or they don't sound like this, so they just call it alternative. It means it, it, it means you don't get played on top 40 radio, basically. It's right. So when did you guys stop becoming alter, an alternative? When we had our first top 40 yeah. radio hit, I guess. I it's one of those just totally indefinable categories that no one wants to be in. And no, we're not alternative. Uh-uh. You know, I, I don't know what we are. Kara is one um, who's on Radio Song, of course, and has his own group, Boogie Down Productions. Recently lectured in North Carolina in front of about a thousand people, and uh, he was asked questions about about street credibility, about the difference between very popular music, which, which in his definition, uh, pop music means popular. In other words, a lot of people listen to it. And he paid us a great compliment in saying that we're one of the few acts that are able to keep one foot in the popular media that is to be on top 40 radio to be to have a lot of different people from all different walks of life mm -hmm. like the group and at the same time have street credibility and, and be acceptable in the clubs yeah. uh, on the street and uh, on the college radio stations and that to me uh, is I, I I don't know if I would apply it to I guess I just did <laughs> I think that that was a pretty pretty deft uh, uh, observation pretty deft observation mm -hmm. um, do you guys make a deliberate effort to avoid anything that's that's, that's trendy or or or, or what well, look at really it. <laughs> yeah. that's what, we're ourselves. I, I, mean, I have. hate to say it. I mean, I hate to say it because this one is this one is really accurate. But the environmental thing right now. I mean, I personally have a fear that it just happens to be the hip thing. Well, that's right, good right now. I mean, no, no, I mean it's great, but. But so is so is uh, you know fa uh, famine in impoverished com countries in, in uh, right. you know what what has happened to that? Well, I don't think the environment is something that that you you can be in for a month and then get over it because it's something you have to live with every day. You know, everyone is not going to get any less aware of the destruction and the, the harm and abuse that we've done to the environment. So I think once the ball is rolling and it is rolling, I think it'll keep going for a long time. Yeah. Do you guys feel, do you guys feel a sense of obligation to stuff like that? Do you, do you have to? You have to take a stand? Not obligation. I think it's just a desire on our part to do what we can. You know, we have a we have a bit of leverage that, say, Joe Average doesn't have, maybe, and we don't mind using it right. to say things that we think need saying. Some bands um, either don't have a lyrical capability. I hate to say that, but but, but other either other bands or other people do. For example, I don't want to mention his name, but he's very well read. Um, I was going to say learned, but very well read. Uh, I should mention his name. David Lee Roth would be one of them. I had a feeling that's who you were yeah, talking about. David Lee Roth. And Denise Stoddard, who does a show that we have called The New Music, was talking to him about it, and she was pressing him on, on the fact that, that you listen to his latest album and expect so much more from David Lee Roth, knowing he's so well read. He's just doing fun rock and roll. Whether or not he felt he had a sense of obligation to use that fact that he, he, he is capable of, of writing his lyrics and not doing so, not taking a stand. And I guess I answered my own question. What do you think about that? Well, do you think people who have the capability sh should? Uh, no, I, I like think it's it's his prerogative as a as an entertainer and an artist, if you want to call him that, to to um, put out any kind of record he wants to. I, I think just because you know things doesn't mean you have to tell other people that you know them. Yeah. And if he wants to make a record that's nothing but entertainment, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, what is the next single going to be? That, not that losing my religion hasn't lost its steam. I think after losing my religion, um, we'll probably move into Texarkana. Into what? Texarkana, right. another unusual choice. Okay. Um, is video done for it yet? Have you decided on, on what it's going to be we like? We haven't decided. Nothing like that? Mm -hmm. All no ideas. Yeah. Okay. And uh, for those of you who would have it in, in, in your city, the command performance is being done tonight here in the Toronto area. Yes. Eastern Sound. Okay. Do you guys know when it gets rebroadcast? Because it's not live. Um, it is live, isn't it? Is it live this evening? That's what I hear. I think it's live. I think tonight Roger? Live, David. Roger, is the command performance live tonight? Is the command performance live tonight? Hey, it's taped and oh. getting aired again on? It's uh, <laughs> Mondays. Uh, All right, I'll do what I can. Sometime. Yeah. Sometime.
I'll find out. We're, we'll, we'll be back on Monday. So on Monday, I'll, I'll give you that list. So people can listen to it. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Right. If you could do the, the uh, broken telephone thing and pass it on down. Okay. Because <laughs> I can't reach. Don't get mad at me. Thanks again ever so much. Sure, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the last album of the Green Here Stand, it's R.E.M. How much? <laughs>